Now, overview. The index notation, this is something which you maybe do not know yet from your high school math. What, what is a matrix, what is a vector, and how to write them. I will give you all the alternatives, which I am aware of. Uh, what are vectors and tensors? That's the purpose of today now, of this lecture. The lecture will take hopefully only about half an hour, and then you know section one and two. Stress, strain, material behavior, elasticity, plasticity, viscosity, that will be purpose of the next lectures. So today it's about the first line, the rest of the lectures will be about the second line. Now, what is the index notation? So a set of quantities we can write as A1, A2, A3, many more up to AN. We call AI the objects, the elements, and I run, is running from 1 to N. So if you put AI, it's the placeholder for a long list, possibly long list. In two dimensions, AI would be only A1 and A2. In three dimensions, AI would be A1, 2, and 3. Okay, so and if we have about a list of this length, and the length is 2 or 3, dependent on the dimension, then we call AI the ith component of, the, of a vector A. A can be written in different ways. AI is the component. A under tilde is the vector, the group of those components. Okay, and n2 or 3 is a limiting. n could be a completely different number also, but if we talk about geometry and different dimensions in space, then we limit ourselves sometimes to 2, and our life is in three-dimensional space. Also, we can say ai is the ith, ele ith element of a column vector, and this is again a different notation. Brackets a designated as a column vector, a tilde designated as, as a column vector, and ai is just indicating one single component, i, but i can be any of those numbers. Okay, now the question is, is this a, i, or a, or however you abbreviate it, however you write it, these are alternatives, these are not new things, is this as a, i just a column of numbers, or is it more to it? Okay, and actually there is more to it. Now, the, the set of quantities, the two-dimensional, three-dimensional space, the ith element, these are the things which I just discussed. Now, the difference between a column of numbers and a vector, the vector has a geometric or physical meaning. Distance. The distance in space is described by the distance in one in the horizontal direction, the distance in the vertical direction, the distance in the depth direction. Okay, so distance needs three numbers in order to be complete. The distance is one example, velocity is another example, and each vector has a norm, and the norm has a unit. Distance, the norm, is the distance in 25 meters, for example, and the unit meters. Velocity is unit meter per second. So the components are going in different directions, but the norm has no direction. It is just the length or the velocity, the speed, if we talk about distance or velocity vectors. OK, A can also be written as a vector above. Some people write the vector below. OK, so A as a vector has, most of the time, it has a physical meaning. Not always. Most of the time, it has a physical meaning. And in this course, we will talk about vectors which with physical meaning. Displacement, distance is one of them. Velocity is another. Now, now we come to repeating uh, things what you can do with vectors. I found a nice uh, YouTube movie where you can see this in a uh, more animated geo uh, geometrical graphical form. Uh, now I show you the mathematics basics. And uh, for this one, we need summation convention. This is a definition. Some of you have heard it already. Some of you maybe have not. And I use the inner product, the scalar product of two vectors as the example 
to introduce the summation convention. And I will explain why we want this, why we need it. OK, now the inner product of two vectors is in different words projecting two ve one vector into the space of another or it's <coughs> uh, calculating the common uh, direction of these two vectors in some words. Okay, so the inner product, the scalar product of two vectors is the product of the first element with the first element of the second vector, second with the second of the other vector, plus, 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 up to n. Okay, and if you have, a, if n is large for two, it's two elements, for three, it's three elements, but if n is large, then you have a big sum. So the summation makes it already shorter. And in even shorter notation, we now use the Einstein conversion where the inner product, which you can write this way also, is written as xi, yi, xp, yp, xq, yq. And you, you have to remember that these things are all the same because a double index ii or pp or qq is replacing the sum. So we drop the sum and we only look at the indices. If the indices are equal, then in our convention, in the so-called Einstein convention, he invented that, he worked a lot with indices, uh, we have to introduce a sum, carry out the sum, and then we get the result. So we go from the right, oh, two double index. This makes it a sum, calculate the sum. This is the inner product. Okay, and why do we do this? It's much shorter than writing down all these elements. It's even shorter and nicer than writing the sum. You only have to recognize that the double index means a sum. If you have an index three times, something is wrong with your equations. Now, i, p, and q, they are all called so-called dummy indices because after summation, they have disappeared. Okay, so three indices, on the other hand, they will survive as you will see in the next slides. So this was the lecture, not the lecture, <laughs> this was the introduction of the summation convention or the Einstein notation, however you call it. And this is a way to abbreviate the notation. Get used to it in the practice, use it as much as possible in the material, you will see it many times. So get used to it because it will become only more when we get to that tensors later. Okay, now, something you know, from your math is a system of equations. If you have a system of equations, A is a matrix, Y is the unknown, X is the known vector, Y is the unknown vector, uh, then you want to solve this, for example. So the i-th line, line number i, spelled out can be written like this. i is the index now. It's a free index, not a double index, so not a dummy index because it's not double. And n is the dummy index. This is placeholder. You can replace n by jj. jj is the dummy index. n was a number, sorry. Uh, now, aij, xj, we drop the sum and in index notation, this is the short notation for this big, possibly very big equation system. Okay, nicer. I consider this as nicer. This is a column vector, this is a matrix. This is a column vector in a different notation. This is the underscore notation. So just to show you the alternatives, which you will see in some books or sometimes in my lectures. Okay, and M and N don't have to be equal here. Now, the matrix A with entries I, J, I is standing for the row. So the first one is standing for the row. Second one is standing for the column. Uh, we try to stick to this convention. This is convention. It could be opposite. In some books, it is used opposite. So be aware that there's a swap possible. But we think of first index as a row, second index as a column. Okay, now example. The inner product, which we designate by a dot, is operating on two vectors, and it will give us a number. So two vectors become a number xi, xi is the index notation for the inner product, and that gives us a single number as a result. If the vectors have a unit, 
this number will have the unit to the power two. Now, the matrix A with entries IJ, I is the row index, J is the column index. As an example, as I just showed, this will lead to something which you need, and this is the unit matrix or the colonical delta. Delta IJ, delta, we will always use this symbol. This is special because this is entries of a matrix and one if I equals to J and zero if I not equals to J. So sometimes we will need this, get used to it. This is a matrix with ones on the diagonal and zeros on the non-diagonal. Okay, now here we use it, S, Xi. So we replace the Xi with delta Ij, Xi, uh, sorry, Xj. So the delta Ij goes together with the Xj. This is replacing the first Xi. Okay, so in index notation, it looks a little in matrix notation, it's the vector, it's the unit matrix, and it's the vector again. And this is taking the place of the scalar product of the inner product. Okay. And note that the JJ index is double, so it's dummy. You can replace it by any other letter. Okay. And something to note, because that will occur in many of the calculations which we do, delta II is not equals to one. Delta II, what means II? I want to sum over all these elements, so that's delta one, one plus delta two, two, and so on. And that is N. In two dimensions, it's two. In three dimensions, it's three. So this is something you have to keep in mind for later calculations and for practice. Now, almost done with the section one. For differentiation, this is something which you also have to keep in mind. We need these derivatives, partial derivatives, many times. So f is a function of some variables. x1, x2, xn can be components of a vector or something else. In this case, it, the, it's implied that this is the position in space. For example, in three-dimensional space, that would be x1, x2, x3. We will use that many times, but in general, it could be n dependencies. The partial derivative with one, respect to one of the functional variables that is abbreviated as f comma taking place of partial derivative and i uh, indicating which one first second or third and so on okay now the total differential of f as you know it from thermodynamics or from other quantity from other causes the total differential is the partial derivative with respect to the first times the differential with respect to the first and so on. Again, this is a lot of writing work. In the index notation, it becomes even shorter than the summation. It's just f comma i dxi. This is the placeholder of the total differential. 